Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome. Moment to be in the fight, Muhammad Ali, Otto. because uh, he stay, he's the greatest. But I have always felt that I could beat him. I believe that. And I'm going to show you this on uh, July 26 what I can do. Everybody have always said with well, Jimmy Ellis, an ex sparring partner, and he's this. And everybody just thinks that I'm just a little bitty a kid. And I'm going to show Muhammad Ali and I'm going to show the whole world just what I can do. I mean, I was a sparring partner. I worked, I got paid. I did my job and did it good. But you never heard the time that he worked with me and spied with me and I paid him. I never really blab with mouth like, <laughs> right. like somebody else blab with mouth. <laughs> but um, he, always gets, he always gets over his view. I can't out talk him, but I will out fight him. I'm going to tell you this right now. I will. When you start regarding people as that, you understand? I didn't look, I done just made a Frazier. I played with him. I didn't take Frazier serious as I should have. Played with him for three rounds. He just showed me he couldn't do nothing in the corner. He lost them, playing. Be more serious. He off guard. I'm gonna be in shape. I'm gonna be ready. Summer and to keep them used. Nothing, and he's not giving me nothing. If I lose, I'm finished. If he loses, he's gonna be farther down the line. But if I lose, I'm finished. Jimmy Ellis in the white shirt and dog trunks was one of Muhammad Ali's favorite sparring partners before Ali was forced to retire because of trouble over draft deferment. Ellis weighed about 195, was fast, and took his sparring instructions from Angelo Dundee, who is now training him for the Ali fight. Ali said recently that neither of them pulled punches in workouts, and that Ellis belted him as much as he belted Ellis. As usual, however, you'll notice that Ali preferred to keep moving, throwing blows sparsely until it was time for the kill. In 1967, I asked Ellis about his dreams for the future. Do you enjoy sparring with the heavyweight champion? Yeah, well, when I box with him, I know I'm boxing with the best. And uh, I get a lot of experience, and I learn a lot of things boxing with him. Actually, it's like going to school for you, I and mean, you're, I mean, you're really uh, with the top man there. Yeah, well, you know, everybody, you got to start some kind of way, so this is my start. And when I box with him, I try to learn everything I can learn, because maybe one day it'll pay off for me, you know. Do you ever have hopes, really, of fighting the heavyweight champion? Well, I, I thought about it, you know. I don't know about it, to be able to beat him. And, I box with him every day, and I know quite a bit about him. So uh, you probably he's the kind of a champion. If I, if I did get up in contention to fight him, I know he would fight me. So Yes, because you probably know more about Muhammad Ali's habits and style than anybody else. Yeah, I think I know quite a bit about it. That payoff came for Jimmy Ellis when he beat Oscar Bonavainer, Floyd Patterson, and Jerry Quarry, and won the WBA title as world champion. Both Ellis and Ali have only one loss on their records, to Joe Frazier. Ellis went five rounds with Smoke and Joe, while Ali went 15. Maybe it's only part of the publicity buildup, but when Ali went into training last month, he said Ellis could beat him if they met on that particular day. July 26th, however, may be another thing. I'm 
come out the winner if I'm in shape. But if I'm not in shape, well, it's hard to go the distance even if you're winning because you could tie in the end and lose. So uh, what worries me now is my, this belly I got. It just won't come off. Usually when I was young, I could run it and sweat it off. I'm exercising, I'm running, I'm training, and every day I look at my belly, it's the same size. What about some of that poetry of yours? After I defeat Ellis in the Astrodome, I'm going to run him and Angelo home. <laughs> the former world WBA heavyweight champion, Jimmy Ellis. His opponent in the red corner from Cherry Hill, New Jersey, weighing 220 and one half pounds, the former heavyweight champion of the world, Muhammad Ali. We are looking into Muhammad Ali's corner and right across Jimmy Ellis's lap. Um, we just missed the shot of Angelo Dundee. Muhammad Ali has little Harry Wiley there with the towel over his left shoulder who was uh, the chief of seconds during Ray Robinson's halcyon days. And uh, it was uh, said around camp that little Harry Wiley, whose head is just protruding over there, as we now switch to Angelo Dundee, whose head protrudes now to the left. Wiley was brought in to perfect Ali's defense against a right hand, or at least that's the story we got. Angelo Dundee, according to Joey Bishop, and uh, I suppose, Joey, that, that is the gospel, had something to do with the 18 and a half foot ring, which is awfully small 18, that right. we have here. Right. I, I don't know. All I know is only Torello is behind me and he's shouting, I want the winner. And if I was a fighter, I'd want the loser. <laughs> right. <laughs> Joey, we'll see if we can get him. Uh, Muhammad Ali weighed in today, very taciturn, very quiet. I have been to many, if not all, of his weigh-ins. And today was the least attended by comedy or drama of any kind, as you'd agree, Joe. Yep. It's, uh, even at the, uh, uh, when he came into the ring and uh, stood next to Ellis. There was nothing, not even a friendly exchange, nothing at all. And when we took the walk this afternoon, it was uh, no bragging, nothing. There was uh, quite a bit of uh, humbleness and humility. Now we see the comparison chart. Ali 29, Jimmy Ellis 31, 215 for Ali, 191, which is the weight that Jimmy Ellis carried when he took such good care of George Chivalo and possibly the best appearance he's ever made. 6'3", uh, Muhammad Ali, 6'1", Jimmy Ellis. I want to go down to biceps. I see 15 and a quarter registered for Jimmy Ellis and 15 and I for uh, Muhammad Ali, and I think that that may be an old figure for Muhammad Ali. One of the things that Joey and I were talking about is Muhammad Ali looked a little bit like a weightlifter when we saw him for the first time well, well, several days ago. Where did they get the weight 215? He hasn't weighed himself since he weighed himself this afternoon. It was maybe maybe they give him a penny and say, here, go out and weigh yourself on some scale and find one that says 215 and then bring the card back. Joey, Man I got weighed 220 and a half pounds and then went out and had uh, a large steak with me. Joey, I got a deal like that going. I go to a particular scale where it says 175 with regularity well, for me. We ought to get this fight on soon because these two could turn out to be lightweights. Um, his man, the man in the ring will be um, Walter Youngblood, will be the cut man, and he right. is excellent. Also, um, Bundini will be there, who has served as foil. Right. And uh, Harry Wiley, who, you know, worked in Sugar Ray's Corner all his life. Note the extra long uh, pants that Muhammad Ali is wearing. Yes. Uh, if he is carrying a little bit of extra weight around the middle, it's not visible under the very high belt line. Please remember, though, that when they talk about hitting below the belt, legally, officially, Gentlemen, well, now, let's the go up for the, the instruction. Texas Commission, the three round, the three knockdown rule is out. If you're knocked down, the opponent must take the mandatory, the man must take the mandatory eight count. The man delivering the blow must go to a neutral corner before I will pick up the count. Now let's have a good fight. It's 12 rounds. Let's watch that back slapping. Fouls. If you get knocked down and fall out of the ring, I commence counting. If you're not able to come back in time, the count goes on. Any questions? I'd like to know who the, who the chief seconds are. Dundee, 
You're the only ones who are allowed in the ring in between rounds under Texas rules. Mandatory eight counts. You must take it. Good luck to you both. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, Angelo Dundee was formerly the trainer of Muhammad Ali. He was always the manager of Jimmy Ellis. He brought him through some tough middleweight fights to where he had become WBA heavyweight champion of the world. And now the inevitable fight presented by Top Rank. Round one. Jimmy Ellis in the darker trucks. Ali cer sudden, certainly is fighting his typical pattern. But here very early is allowing himself to be backed into the ropes. He did allow that too much against Joe Fraser, you recall. It was one of his cardinal faults. Solid left to the body by Jimmy Ellis scores. Much has been said about the fact that Ellis has the sneak right hand and Ali better beware. But you can't help recording that Ellis has knocked most of his men down and out with the left hand. Bonavena fell to the right cross. Ali slipped that beautifully, but he did not return. About 45 seconds gone, round one. Ali will use that left jab to open you up more than a punishing instrument at first. Ellis, when he uses the left jab, means to hurt right off. I'm saying this right now. Ellis is shooting a right hand to the jaw, but I have heard it's in the body that he wants to sink it. More than a minute gone by round one. Blocked nicely by Muhammad Ali. He is on his toes, dancing, carrying his weight well, is top heavy. One minute left, round one. In my calculation, Ali will have to land several bows to come abreast of Ellis or win this round one. He got two blows in fairly solidly there. Ellis very fast and leaped to his foe to catch him on the corner, on the ropes. Thirty seconds left in round one. Dave Anderson of the time said there would be a knockout by Ellis in round one. A solid left to the chin by Ellis. Seconds only left in round one. And there's the bet. Well, so far it's going according to my prediction. I said both guys would show up. We've been taking a uh, fight, a uh, French count here, Joey. <laughs> yeah. And it shows Ali landed three effective left jabs. Seven jabs landed by Ellis. Three of which were effective. Ellis landed a solid left hook to the body, and he landed about eight body blows, and Ellis's round should be scored from our point of view here, clear. You gave Ellis 10 points for that round? We do That's give Ellis 10 points. Okay. Want me to make my prediction now? Okay. I think uh, it'll be Muhammad Ali on his toes for about three or four rounds, and then flat-footed, and knockout in the seven. These two fighters have had common foes as we go into round two. We have Ellis ahead. Ali told members of top rank he would quit the business if he loses to Ellis tonight. European promoters on board here in Houston say that Ali is gate appeal would go down halfway should he lose tonight. Solid 
right cross by Muhammad Ali, who he missed the uppercuts. And Ellis feels back. Ellis eyes a bit glazed. And he is holding on. Ellis felt the solid right. Landed blows with not that much power. <laughs> Ellis has got the fear on his right uppercut. It was the blow which was on its way to Fraser when Fraser cut loose with a left hook to the head. Ali looks in excellent shape, not worried too much about the extra pound that he's got. Seems to be carrying it well. I don't think that Ellis has yet recovered from the solid right. One minute left. Round two. Ali changed foot direction that time, and throughout his uh, sparring and training, Ellis was working on changing his directions, gliding left and gliding right. In the boxing jargon, it's Ellis who's the glider. Jimmy Ellis trained with an assortment of better sparring mates than did Muhammad Ali. Fifteen seconds remaining, round two. Left hook by Ali, last straight left by Ali to the body, landed. And the bell ending round two. Guy, you have to admit when he's uh, when Muhammad Ali is in the ring, there's a certain electricity. Even when he's just moving around without throwing a punch, without doing anything, just his moves and and his uh, look in the ring are almost worth the price of admission. Some uh, experts who are visiting from the various countries carrying our closed circuit TV uh, broadcast have ranked in the last week or so have ranked Ali one of the ten best defensive fighters of all time. Although he doesn't do it in the traditional way. Um, Harry Wiley said that he does a lot of things in an unorthodox style, but you can't change it because it works great for him. His hands are, are really fast. And uh, like you've said, there is the weight, uh, the added weight has certainly not slowed him down anyway, but we've only seen two rounds so far, right? Joey, would you have to say that Ali is thinking pretty, pretty soon about here now? He wants to find out what Fraser did take out of him and what did time take out of him? Now he should begin to find out. It is round three. We have given Ali round two. He landed eight left jabs to five Ellis. Three hooks. Now Jimmy Ellis appears to be going where he really intended to go. The fake was to the face, the blow was to the body with the right hand. Ali does not like to be hit downstairs. For that matter, who does? Watch it now. They're beginning to talk about the fact that when Ali pulls his head back instead of moving from side to side, slipping the blow, he is moving back a little bit slower and being caught. 
Ready on the floor. A minute and a half left in round three. And Ellis has clipped him with some solid left jabs. The Ali shuffle. Ali that time looked for an opening when he slipped the left hand and he didn't find it at the body. Ali nicely stopped the right hand with a shoulder. He is confusing Ellis now. And the crowd loves the step. Ali is giving Ellis a lesson. Fifteen seconds remaining in round three. But while Ali danced, he was being pecked away at by Ellis, and some might give Ellis the round. Joey, I don't, he's still he's still as exciting when he's not even throwing a punch. I guess that's why he's so uh, so great. And the end of round three, Joey. We're going to show in slow motion some of the steps. You're uh, more of a proponent on that than I am. Okay. Where's the feet? I think you can see all of the motions just, you know, from the, uh, even from the uh, knees up. But uh, that's uh, kind of rough when you're fighting a guy and, and you're throwing punches at him and he's not there. That can discourage you quite a bit, too. I'm just wondering how great, how really great this man would have been had he not had uh, the three years uh, layoff. We have that situation to uh, conjecture on both ends. Remember that Jimmy Ellis... Broke his nose in that fight right. with uh, Patterson. For 17 what, months or 17 so. months, right. Joey. And was bloomed up right. to 210 and a half pounds, I think, right. when he fought Joe Frazier. Certainly not the kind of weight he can fight. Right. We're coming up for round four. We have given Ellis round three. He leads on our card two rounds to one. As a matter of fact, Boxing Illustrated, with their managing editor, Lou Eskin down there, have agreed with us and have given Ellis's, Ellis round one and round three. So we are in concert there, Joey. This is round four. Nice picking off of the right hand by Muhammad Ali. The left landed in the body. He missed all of the left hands at the face. He has never taken his eyes off free of Ellis's eyes yet. You have to conjecture. Does the boss know the sparring mate, or does the sparring mate know the boss best? Some say it's that one. Sparring mate knows better. Ellis looks all right. Taking command. Sometimes Ellis, sometimes Ali has had trouble finishing his man. One minute left, round four. Ali bleeding from the nose. Ellis's eyes look glazed. Ali left enough in Ellis so that Ellis can come back.
15 seconds remaining in round four. The best round for Muhammad Ali. But Ellis has fought out of it, and like a tiger, he smiled at Ali as the bell sounded. Said something to him. Well, that's the first time I've seen Muhammad Ali allow someone to take the play away from him at the end of the round like that. That's right, Joey. That's what happened, too. Actually, Ellis very strong. Yep. And um, remember that he, too, has been known for his combat prowess. We have a chart on the amount of blows which Ali struck and landed 13 left jabs and half of them effectively in six left hooks nine right hands and Ellis's um, account in this infinitesimal so big you, round. we've got the match even up to here right two the match even each. up to here okay. conditions going to mean an awful lot This is round five. In the computerized matches that we had on uh, Muhammad Ali several years ago, a rundown showed that most of his opponents lasted 6.7 rounds per fight. Ali remains on his toes. He was not punished in round four at all, but he was wary of a rally by Ellis. Joey, I don't think that Ellis at this point is um, as aggressive or drawing on Ali's punches as much. Uh, he seems to be content with sparring a bit, well, that, laying off a little bit. Ali's gotten much sharper too, you know, as the rounds have gone on. He's, he's not missing as he did in the first round. He's making them count now. Should Ellis have come out smoking, Joey? I don't know. I don't know what a man's plan is for the fight. Twelve rounds is not ten. You know, it's an extra two rounds. Who knows? At the head, Ellis is not moving as lively now. And a combination by Ali could catch him. Let's watch this. Just in case you're wondering about blows below the belt, legally the belt line is from hip line to hip line and you can ignore the belt of the trucks the respective fighter may be wearing. It's from hip bone to hip bone. They've had remarkable periods like this. 30 seconds left this round. They have not said a word to each other. And Ali appears to be a little tired, a little out of gas. He could be playing possum. There's the bell ending the round. Well, Guy, I'll tell you one thing. It's a great fight. I'm, I'm certainly enjoying it. Uh, maybe so many people are under the pressure that Jimmy Ellis was not even uh, a worthy opponent of Muhammad Ali. And I must say for the past uh, five rounds, he's given a pretty good account of himself. Do you agree? Joey, I'm looking at... I, I, I certainly do, and I am looking ahead at Ellis's corner right now, and I see as a contrast to the pandemonium that used to reign in Ali's corner when Angelo was there, no fault of Angelo Dundee's. 
There is quiet now, and the only talking I see is Angelo Dundee talking uh, uh, to uh, Ellis a little bit, and Dr. Pacheco is uh, whispering in his ear. Uh, do you get the feeling now and then that they are looking at each other and they're, they're darting eyes of saying something to each other, Joey? I'll tell you, I just went into a state of shock. I looked over at Muhammad Ali's corner and he gave me, took a deep sigh and said, Joey, what are you doing here? <laughs> and standing up. This is round six. We have done a computation on the amount of blows struck in an attempt. Good solid right by Muhammad Ali and going away. One of the few who can hit going away and score. How did you score the last round? We have Ali winning that round. Mainly on the left jab. It's kind of unusual seeing Muhammad so businesslike, is it not? It's been that way right. uh, in the last two or three days as he's been psyching right. himself for this fight, Joey. Well, it's not bad business. Ellis's best shot is his left hand. And he's being kept at bay by the left of Muhammad Ali. In fact, when Ali's moving around that way, both hands have been nullified. That left hand is awfully sharp, guy. Wow. My oh, goodness. And he hasn't thrown a single combination. He hasn't thrown a right hand right on top of it either. Straight left hand. One minute remaining, round six. The fight being taken away from Jimmy Ellis. And unless the plan is to weather six, seven, and eight and catch up with Ali on the basis that Ali may really have lost some of the energy to um, Joe Fraser, Ellis is letting the fight slip away. And they say in his corner that he gets lazy. Seconds only remaining this round. Left for the body, sunk in and again by Jimmy Ellis. Several of the few blows he's managed to land on top of each other. And the bell. He's pretty sharp, I'll tell you that. His punches are awfully sharp. And that's all he was doing all day long. He took my son and I to a late lunch guy I just kept flicking that left hand out just like he's doing in the ring right now we might tell the fans across the world of the common enemy is that um, Ali and Ellis are fought Ali KO'd by the way the 15th round a lot of people dispute the action of the referee in that round and feel that maybe Ali was helped I don't particularly cotton to that. Ellis won in uh, 12 rounds against Bonavena, dropped him though with a left and right cross. In the Jerry Quarry fight, to recall, Ali stopped Quarry in three, Joey. Yeah, 15 stitches. Ellis went 15 rounds with Quarry, and it was tough, close. And then Patterson, Ali um, KO'd Patterson in 12. No, he? Yes, he did. He KO'd Patterson right. 12 rounds, and Ellis took a decision. And some say Patterson won that one. Do you think common enemies give you any idea of a fellow? Pardon me? When you look at the common fighters that uh, these two fellows have fought, does it give yeah. you any conclusion? No, you can't. It's difficult to uh, to say how Ellis fought against uh, Bonavina and then try to match it with how Muhammad Ali fought against Bonavina. They fight different fights. I agree with that, Joey. In our computation, Ali won round six widely. And again, mostly on the left jab. Earlier, I predicted this round for Muhammad Ali. 
I may have to uh, retract that or never make another prediction again. What is the point of sparring sessions? What is the point of battle plans? What is the point of announcers asking these fellas? I've hardly seen Ellis throw a combination around. And yet, against the sparring partners, it looked like Ali, he was firing left, right, left. Well, sparring partner, unfortunately, is not an opponent. You can take a lot of chances with a sparring partner, but you can't take with an opponent. He thought he was going somewhere. He had stung Ali with a left to the body and followed with a right hand to the jaw. And Ali just evened everything up with a good, powerful right. I think right about here, there is no more feeling about that Ellis might have as to awe or reverence for the man who used to play yourself as his farming. One minute left this round as Ellis fights for his fistic life too. Seems to be overpowering Ellis. Ellis seems uh, a little wary about throwing combinations that leave him open. The left hand is coming in so sharply, Muhammad Ali, Joey. Ellis missing opportunities now. Fifteen seconds less. As a matter of fact, left in this round. And the bell. Well. Muhammad keeps piling up all of these points. It's up to overcome. By the way, my prediction went right down the drain. Gotcha. Don't feel bad. Uh, now you're officially a sportscaster. <laughs> Right. Not only that, you become a hero. If you do it right, you become a hero. If you don't do it right, you've forgotten anyhow. Joey, I, I, I have to wonder why athletes would allow so much of their careers to be staked on one fight. What can Ellis do with a loss here tonight, after the loss here tonight? Well, with the, uh, with the boxing game like it is, there are always the other guys. If you fought Muhammad Ali, you almost qualify yourself to fight a few other guys. They'll advertise you as having, you know, once I played the coat. Right. Exactly. Sorry about that. But for Muhammad Ali, what would come next? Would they go for Fraser after this? I think it would be Fraser in California. The forum. Joe, I don't feel his performance here, although considerably ahead of Ellis, necessarily shows me he's ready for Fraser. Yeah. Well, if Peter fought this way, like he's fighting tonight against Fraser, he has no, no clowning. He's been giving a very good account of himself. Plus the difference is Fraser will take that left hand and walk in and throw a left hook over the top of you. He keeps boring in. Now Jimmy's boring in, but he's not boring in with punches. As we, much as uh, Fraser did. We have given Ali the round just concluded. How does the fight stand now? Ellis has one round thus far. One round. No, he had two rounds earlier. I'll have to check. Yeah, he won he one did and three. He right. has one and three, correct. I'll say All again, right. Joey, I've seen nothing to convince me that Ali is ready for Fraser again yet. I've seen him throw a tired of blows in just these same situations before, and they're coming one at a time. 
Watch the effort when he throws the right hand. Taking nothing away from his winning stride here. Play on him, Jim! And there, the reason that Ollie's 30 pounds could mean something. He virtually playfully threw his hands down. That was the extra weight and power he has in those mitts. Made it possible for him to push Ellis's blows down. seconds left in this round. And yet, although Ellis forced Ali into the ropes with that attack at the head, Ali gave him a good part of the body that Ellis didn't do anything about, Joey. I'm sorry, you know what happened? Someone in the back was shouting something at me. And I said, I'm, excuse me for a moment, I gotta watch this fight. And a guy just beat me up to date. You want I'm me sorry. to say that again? I don't but remember. Exactly what you said. I said this, that even though Ellis forced Ali back with the blows to the head against the ropes, Ali gave him a great deal of the body, gave him a great deal of the body to shoot at, and uh, Ellis didn't do anything about it. He said he was going to fire at the body if, Ella, if Ali left himself open that way. Didn't do it here. Watch this. We are replaying some of the action in the round just concluded. There's a part of the torso left open, and again, he went headhunting. Daniels, who uh, beat uh, Manuel Ramos earlier, just stepped by and said he just wanted to say hello to his mother. This is round eight. We'll check that round now. This is a 12-rounder at the Astrodome in Houston. This is Guy LeBeau with Joey Bishop at ringside. We have Ari ahead. Ellis has just, uh, well, Ellis has got to move quickly now to catch him. What was the, uh, how did you score the last round, Guy? Some will make yeah, it even. Yeah. And despite the flurry by Ellis, we're calling it for Ali in that round. You scored it six to two in favor of Muhammad Ali. That is right. Okay. The refereeing by Jay Epson has been excellent, Joe. Oh yes. Back where is it? There he is. Yeah. He's from Arizona, is he not? Mm-hmm. Let's look at Ali's feet for a second. Is he on his toes or moving back a little well, bit? He's set to hit hard. He's got the, uh, the right heel up. You know? This is only fought in spurts since Hunt ran out of bounds. Yeah, yeah. He hit them nicely with the left hand and then takes one back. But that advantage is lost. Ellis is forgetting defense after landing with the left hand. Come on, 
Ellis with a good rally. Seconds only remaining in round nine. Ellis appears to be hurt. And the bell. Ellis appeared to be hurt. Ellis appeared to be hurt. Let's get into his corner if we can. Dundee has sent for something for Dr. Pacheco, and I think it's the smelling salts. Well, what it is they use to just revive the senses a little bit. That's the last note, isn't it? That's the old note. And watch this. We're going to attempt to bring you the hard right hand. That did the damage. And there it is. Our director Howard Zuckerman right on the nose with that shot. Yeah, I saw Angelo Dundee trying to get uh, Ellis uh, to be able to focus. He shouted him something about don't fall asleep in there, and this right. is round 10. Ellis has fought in brief spurts. How'd you score that round, guy? I thought Ellis was doing pretty good till that last minute or so. I'm doing a quick count. It could go as an even round. Well, then it's, Ellis will have to score a knockout to win this fight. But as a matter of fact, you can't give an even round. In this uh, no, in the state, it's a ten, ten for the winner, class. right? Just the last round. So with um, yeah. Ali finishing in better fettle, I guess it would have to go to Muhammad Ali once more. One of the things that Jimmy Ellis has done has been to misjudge distance when he had opportunities to throw right hands and to throw combinations. Go, Jim. And I'm forced to make judgment between whether he misjudged or was worried about throwing. Come on, Jim. Find a right hand under the heart by Ellis. Ellis's legs appear rubbery. He is hurt. He is defending. And I say that the best Ali we've seen, Ellis would not have lasted this long in this round. A minute left. Ali is missing some of those blows out of his own ability to get strength, to get power, and to get sharpness up. Fifteen seconds remaining in this round. Oh. But Ellis is still standing. Joey, what I seem to miss wow. in Ollie strangely that time was the kind of animal face he gets on. A real mad face when he's got a man about ready to go. I have never seen anyone. I've seen a lot of fights. He is so methodical that sometimes it appears like he's not trying. He wants, when he lands with a left, he wants to throw a perfect right hand on top of it. And if it's not uh, set up for perfection, he holds back on it. But I think you're seeing a great, great uh, boxing exhibition here with Muhammad Ali. We have Ali widely winning that one in all departments. 
and of course the uppercut was very fanciful and very effective for him. So I think the question really boils down to can Ellis last out the, the fight? But then anything can happen in a heavyweight bout, correct? With round 11 coming up, based yeah. upon the scoring we've done here at ringside, Ellis has got to have a KO to win. I'd like to know what happened to Muhammad Ali's stomach. It's just not there. And it was there this morning. Joey, we've got to find out that technique. Eat everything you want. Maybe don't swallow. I don't know. Top rank. Presenting the inevitable fight between former sparring mate, waits to be called that, Jimmy Ellis and Muhammad Ali. Ellis has now been in trouble at least twice. He was knocked down. Ali landing with a good amount of the left jabs. And still up on his toes. Right. left hand tonight is as good as Tommy Lagrins. This is not Jimmy Ellis at his best, the man who held the WBA World Championship. We thought when we came in Thursday to see uh, two of his last workouts that he looked over sharp and over trained. Some said he had complained about that possibility. This is the Muhammad Ali that Ali himself likes to project to the audience worldwide. The dancing master, rat tap tap with the left hand. Don't get too worried. Roll with the shoulders. Slap disdainfully. That's speed, guy. That's lightning up there. Minute left, round 11. He thinks great. He really thinks great if you're watching. He, he never panics, Muhammad Ali. Another rap against Jimmy Ellis. He never tried to get Ali inside, or hardly ever. Ali is a notoriously poor inside fighter. Come on, Come on. Tough to get inside. Yeah, when a guy's jabbing your head off. Right. Look at those. Seconds only remaining in round 11. And the bell sounds in the round 11, and we have given Ellis only two of the rounds up to now. This is unofficial, of course, Joey, and you're not part of this. We won't, don't want to coerce you into agreeing with us. Okay. Round 12 will be coming up. Ali again, winning, going away. So that actually under the rules of the Houston, Texas Athletic Commission, you could score this a 10-8 round. This is being scored under the 10-point must system. And we'll just repeat because it is the 12th and final round coming up. The three um, knockdown rule does, uh, does apply. And the eight count is mandatory. And clearly on what must be everyone's card, I'm sure, Jimmy Ellis has got to deck Muhammad Ali to win it. Round 12. For one of these fighters, a career may be over. In my opinion, we saw a rather dried out, perhaps overtrained Jimmy Ellis. Although he has never fought the fanciful moving target of a Muhammad Ali before.
A larger question looming, Joey. Is Fraser lost anything to Muhammad Ali in the battle ring he took in there? Frank? Well, I think if I took a little bit out of both of them. Neither man shows much in the way of being cut. This is in a way a double defeat and a double victory. Angelo Dundee wanted victory for his fighter. In order to show Muhammad Ali how important it was to have Angelo Dundee in his corner. That hurt Ellis. He's falling in for help. Ali has his man in trouble. One minute remaining in this fight. Ellis is reeling. He looks defenseless on the ropes. The referee may be deciding whether he's going to stop the fight. He is stopping oh. the fight. Jay Epson wisely ruled. Jimmy Ellis had nothing more. And a rush comes up from this big crowd at the Astrodome in Houston, Texas. As they realize, Muhammad Ali has won it. Joey Bishop is in the center well, of the ring. Great fight. What else can I tell you? Joey, uh, to uh, Muhammad Ali. Plenty of confusion up there. We're trying to find Joey Bishop. Joey thinks of himself often as six feet five. Right now, you know better. But he's tall in many other ways. Where's Joey Bishop? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can get him. Can I get him on TV? Yeah. Maybe you'll be hearing his voice coming through that. Can we get him over here? There he is. On the uh, TV panel over here. And we can talk about it. Um, doing right, first, first, must, first I must say right here, I'm a religious man, and I thank Almighty God Allah for my success. I thank Almighty God Allah for I'll leave the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, who really teaching me to live a good, live a good life. And as Ellis, uh, speaking on the fight, and also I want to say hello to my friend out there, Bill Cosby, Fat Albert's son. He's sitting out there watching. Dick show. Gregory is saying hello to you. My also. friend Dick Gregory here is. Mainly Bill Cosby gave me a call today and told me good luck. So um, I thank you. I'm glad to see you here too, Joey. Thank you, I'm Muhammad. You I know a little about boxing. No, I took the walk with you today, and that's all I know about it. But I must say, your left hand tonight was—I've never seen it that sharp. Thank Did you feel that way also? Well, yes, it was sharp, but my time was a lot. Ernie Terrell, old friend here, possible Ernie? challenger. Uh, Give a shot to again. Okay, Ernie. Ernie, you, you qualify, and you'll be in line for a shot when I get finish with Joe Frazier. Is that going to be your next fight? Um, no, I'm flying on a couple more. A little overweight here tonight, a little slow. But what did you finally come in at? I came in at probably 224 after dinner. That's what I predicted, but I don't see the stomach on you that I saw when we went to the amusement. I'm tall and the weight is solid, but uh, it's hot here in Texas and fighting here in July of all times. So it makes you drink so much liquor.
Nobody, it. nobody can outbox Jim Ellis but me. In other words, he's not that strong. Or I would say hard hitting and devastating, and relentless. But James Ellis is the best boxer in the world. Beat Otis Martin, a good boxer. Beat Patterson. Beat Jerry Quarry, a good boxer. And was beating the devil out of Joe Frazier. Ali, Ali. See, I can see a man's eyes. I can see the man was in trouble. The man was in critical trouble if I kept on. Who's talking about the fourth round? Bro? The last round. Right. Right. Ali, you're talking last about the sixth round. He was in critical trouble. Critical. And with my 230 pounds hitting him hard, it, it hurt him too bad. And I knew I'd won. I knew they was going to stop it. And he couldn't come out Monday. If I just did that, he would have stayed numb. Just that would have kept him numb. Just that. Did you, did you feel pretty good when you opened the cut on his nose? Did you figure you were going to be able to get to him after that? I wasn't worried about the blood on his nose. It bleeding a couple times, but that wasn't going to win the fight. I had to get in there and really whoop him in order to win. But... Uh, a lot of shots I missed. I just couldn't hit him like I wanted to.